Hey, good day, folks. It's uh, Lance Klessig uh, here in southeast Minnesota on a really an awesome uh, early October morning. Uh, I wanted to provide an update today on interseeding, interseeding in corn specifically, uh, but even more specific than that, uh, comparing 30 inch corn to 60 inch corn. And so here we have, uh, you know, some 60 inch rows. And let's see if I can show you some of the biomass. So we have some tremendous amount of biomass, you know, 15, 20 inches of biomass. Um, you know, we're looking at, uh, I think the mix is around 14 or 15 species. You know, here you have some, uh, some, some buckwheat uh, that is fully mature. Let's see if you can see these. We have some really nice uh, bulbs in here, some brassicas, the radishes, some radishes, um, turnips some kale uh, i think there was four or five kinds of clover with a annual ryegrass base and so again the idea here is to um, you know the combine's going to come through here in a couple weeks uh, take the corn off and then we're going to have some pretty awesome grazing uh, you know if we have a cow calf herd if we have um, you know maybe we have some dairy heifers you know they could really make a living out on on this kind of forage for sure um, and so and part of the idea is, can we do this while maintaining yield? And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll find out what kind of yield we have when the combine goes through. But again, if we can grow, you know, a pile of these guys and a bunch of, um, you know, really nice clovers, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of benefit to that uh, in trying something different. And so we have a lot of sunlight uh, that was able to come down the rows here because we are again on 60s true 60s um, we are going to have a ton of biomass to feed those cows and, and not only that we have a lot of diversity as far as different species of, of cool season warm season grasses you know broad leaves um, we just really have tremendous amount of biomass here and so um, you know, these rows are uh, more of an uh, east-west orientation, so that's something we want to think about when we, when we plant, uh, when we interseed. Um, so why don't you hang with me here? We're going to jump over uh, a couple rows, and uh, then we're going to compare the amount of biomass that we have here, which is tremendous, to what we have in the 30-inch rows, which are obviously narrower and going to let less sunlight in. So... And jump in here just a ways. So here we are in some 30s. Um, you know, here's some crimson clover showing up, some of the brassicas. Uh, but again, far, far less. You know, we have more annual ryegrass, I think, showing up. We do have some, some dandelions in here and whatnot. But um, here's an interesting guy. <sighs> Uh, so, you know, we have some biomass here, but significantly, significantly less. I mean, I'm talking, I'm thinking, uh, gosh, 10% of what we had next door. So, um, again, we're, we're trying to do something different. You know, our corn markets, our, you know, our corn soybean markets really, um, now they did pump up here a little bit, at least the soybeans did, but what can we do to, you know, stack on enterprises so we can, you know, if we have cattle, we can be out here grazing, you know, and barring a, a huge snowfall here in the end of October or something like that, we'll probably be able to be out here grazing for several weeks, maybe even a month, depending on how many acres of, um, of you know, interseeded covers that we have. And so, uh, again, just wanted to bring you an update comparing, you know, 30-inch rows uh, to 60-inch rows planted, you know, the same, everything's the same. Uh, obviously, the population over there in the row is is doubled up to maintain the the same uh, infield uh, corn population. So, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, if you like our videos, uh, give us a thumbs up. And lastly, uh, choose to make it a great day, everyone.